This is John Zaninovich. Welcome to Move My Mass. You'll be hearing from great guests talk about balancing life and being fit. Hey, welcome to the show. Um, I got Rory Began here today. He's a Naval Academy recruit. He's going to play water polo for them. And he's a senior at Garces High School at the moment. Um, you know, still swimming, getting in shape for getting in shape for the Naval Academy. So glad to have him on. Rory, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you for having me. Yeah. Excited. So, you got a lot of big things ahead of you. I you do. Know, Naval yeah. Academy. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I made my decision. Well, I signed officially uh, yeah. last week on Tuesday at Garces. Um, but I've had this decision going back in June when I visited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went on a couple college visits on the East Coast. And I got the opportunity to be at the Naval Academy for a week. And that was really, uh, really cool to see all the teammates. Uh, they were going through plebe summer at the time. Yeah. Uh, some of the freshmen. So I got to see, you know, how hardcore that was. What it's going to be like. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what made you go down the route of uh, the Naval Academy? What made you uh, I wanted to go to the Naval Academy since I was in fifth grade. Uh -huh. uh, my grandfather was in the Navy mm -hmm. on my dad's side. And then... My grandmother's brothers, they were they were in Vietnam. So and also my brother got accepted into the Air Force Academy for water polo. Yeah. So we have kind of like a uh with the academies a long lineage of people, you know, serving. Um, but mainly I've I've always just grown up with my dad showing me airplanes that my uh -huh. grandfather designed and uh he worked for Northrop Grumman. Uh-huh. And so he was uh a part of he was a part of an engineer team and he designed a couple of planes and so like i said i just grew up in that area and um i visited the naval academy and i just i loved it so, right yeah. yeah well it's it's pretty cool that you had that interest and then now it's actually happening yeah that's a that's a huge success story mm -hmm. and uh so, you know you're going to play water polo there very competitive school right. to be playing for. So that's that's yeah. tremendous. When did your water polo career start? It what started, age did you start? I started probably when I was, I played club around like seven years old, uh -huh. but I've been swimming like my entire life growing yeah. up. Uh, I went to Jan Graves house and she always had lessons for like, I don't even know, four year olds. Yeah. We do the backstroke in her pool. And uh, my dad swam in college and then my mom dove. And uh, so just a long family of swimmers, Bass aquatic swimmers. people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'll brag on you a little bit here. You hold how many records, Garces, uh, in I hold, swimming? I hold three records. Three currently. records yeah. in the, what what events? The 50 free, or uh, not the 53, excuse me, um, 100 free, 200 free, and the four by one relay. All right, so let's just get into it. I yeah. know how fast you are, but we're going to tell everybody how fast right. you are. What's your 100 free? 100 free time is a 45.8. <laughs> that was beating, uh, beat the record last year. And kind of, are you swimming this year? I'm not swimming this year. You're not swimming this I'm year? I'm not, no. I kind of laugh at that inside. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, he can go smash his own records, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, so that's a big choice to not swim. Yeah. I decided not to swim because, um, obviously I'm playing water polo. I'm not swimming at the academy and at a college level, uh, swimming isn't as big of a deal because it's the play is a lot slower. Mm -hmm. And although, um, in high school, everybody loves to counterattack and, you know, quick shoot, shooting the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just not very realistic in college. Uh, there's a lot of timeouts, you know, plays set up and develop. And so I was just focusing on gaining weight and uh, getting a lot bigger because I'm going to be playing against, you know, seniors in college. Uh, you better watch out. You know, you might end up in the 46s <laughs> again. You know, right, so watch yeah, out. You yeah. might end up real yeah. slow. Well, I'm, not, I'm, <laughs> I'm still swimming. Uh, I swim every day still, right, but I'm right. not swimming like, you know, 3,000 yards. Yeah. I'm doing probably like 1,300 yards. I'll, I'll do like, you know, 10 twos or something, mm -hmm. but I'm not, um, I'm not going to a two hour swim practice. Right. Nor do I think I need to. So what point. is your approach? You know, you want to put on weight. 
You mm-hmm. want to concentrate on the, the the actual game of water polo versus swimming. Right. What's your workout regimen at the time? At the well, moment? Well, right now, uh, water polo wise, I'm playing water polo down south in uh-huh. Pasadena. And so I drive down there uh, twice a week. And I love going to Pasadena and playing with, I mean, those guys are the best of the best down south. Yeah. Um, we're playing against, you know, USC, USC, UCLA, Pepperdine, uh, my Navy coach, and uh, I think, oh, Stanford. Those mm-hmm. were all coaches that were at my, or assistant coaches that were at my water polo game um, last weekend. Okay. So, I mean, those guys watch. That just shows you like the tournament and levels of experience that I'm playing at now. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. So I do that twice a week, which makes it a little tough to like work out because I'm driving for four hours, yeah. you know, there and back. Yeah. But um, I work, uh, I lift about three, three to four times a week. Mm-hmm. And then I swim. I like to swim and then work out. Okay. Swim first. And, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to go to in shape, but right. I don't, their pool is just too hot. And now that it's warming up again, it's, I can't do, you know, 10 ones in that tiny little pool. It's like right, four right. feet yeah. uh, high. So, um, right. So you, uh, the guys you're playing against now, they're still in high school or are they, are these guys already college players? Well, one of the, this last tournament specifically was a 19 and under tournament. Okay. So yeah, some of them were already in college and they were coming right. back. Uh, but we had some kids on our team that were in college too, that came back usually like JUCOs junior colleges, um, you're not going to get any guys from Stanford coming back to play in a right. 19U tournament. But, right, right. But yeah, I mean, there are guys there, but uh, usually it's just 18U, okay. which is mostly like seniors. And yeah, high yeah. So people my age, but... Um, what, are, what are you expecting the biggest difference to be in the college game versus high school game? I've found this these last couple of weeks playing with the team down south, Rose Bowl, that it's it's a lot more chess game than mm-hmm. it is just like trying to shoot really hard and you know give it to your best guy. You're always trying to think three steps ahead, and um, yeah. It, and I've always known that. I've always known that. I mean, it's kind of you kind of expect that to go three steps ahead, but there's a lot of things like if I slide left. And my guy attacks me, then I have to give it to, you know, my boy Miles. And Miles knows that he has to get the ball in from there. So you're always yeah. thinking yeah. Uh, three steps ahead. And um, that's one of the major differences that I've seen it playing seems, with Rose Bowl. Yeah, and it seems like the positioning of the defensive players is at a much higher level. Because they also know there are also three plays right. ahead, just like you're three plays ahead. Because now, like, like you mentioned it, you know, it's not just about shooting the ball hard. Because mm. the goalie play seems like it right. increases tenfold. Yeah. But, you know, of course, you have those amazing goalies in high school, but it's like you're playing that amazing goalie every game now. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, you know, the term I don't know if they still use it. Old term, you know, it always had to be bar in right. almost to yeah. make a goal because mm-hmm. they're going to block anything that's in open space. Right. Yeah. And another thing is. Uh, just the level of your legs. So everybody's out of the water now, mm-hmm. like at their waist. Yeah. And that's a lot of things you don't see in high school is people being, you know, kind of lazy and uh, you're tired. Maybe you're just not in shape, but the level is waist is, is waist high. You're always up on your legs. Uh, but yeah, the goalie thing is always a interesting situation because in high school you're like, okay, we know that so-and-so doesn't have a good goalie, you know? Um, yeah. Let's just, you know, shoot or they're, you know, they're blind in the sun or something. Yeah. But uh, everyone's good. Right. In college. Everyone's good. Everybody's been recruited. Everybody's me. Everybody's fast. Everybody's Every- fast. Yeah. Everyone's strong. Different levels of fast, but it's all fast. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, you can only be so fast to where like you're making an impact on the game. Like I'm, I'm fast enough to make an impact on a game at a high school level. Um, cause I could just blow by kids, but in the college yeah. level that starts to get yeah, even with it'll you. Be a little, yeah. What is your favorite part of the game? My favorite part of the game is, uh, I mean, you have real physical player. You like to get in there. And- yeah. 
I like yeah. my brother's a lot more physical than I am, but uh, like we can't play each other. When he comes back from college, we'll always like get in fights, and so our coach doesn't let us scrimmage against each other. <laughs> uh, we're usually put on the same team because it works better. Yeah, but uh, I get I get pretty physical underwater, but I know guys that just like they don't care at all about their opponent. They'll just there's punches thrown, there's yeah. you know kicking yeah. and. I mean, I, I see like the benefits in that you're kind of, you know, intimidating the other player. And, uh, but I got my nose broken right. last year, last season. And so ever since that happened and my brother got his nose broken and, um, I don't, I don't believe in trying to hurt someone to that extent. And yeah, that's a different, there's one, th like you said, there's strategy in playing physical, mm -hmm. but then it can, yeah. Nobody wants to really intentionally hurt somebody else. Right. Or there's probably some players like that, but mm. but also it takes away from the game. If you're just concentrating on the physical part, and there's ways to use it, then there's ways to abuse it. Right. If you're abusing it, then all it does is hurt your game. Yeah. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. you know, making the moves. But it's certainly one of the most fun things to watch in the sport when you yeah. know it's when you know it's getting physical, mm -hmm. you know. Best thing ever are the underwater cameras. Like, that's the best part of watching, mm -hmm. the, you know, water polo in the Olympics. Right, because they have that. Yeah, you can see <laughs> everything that's going on, and that's another thing about watching the game from the outside, especially if you don't know the sport. It's kind of hard to follow things because you don't know what's going on. You're like, well, why didn't he just shoot it? Because he's being held. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like halfway underwater. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But whereas you know another sport like football, you can kind of see what's going on. Um, so that makes it kind of hard for people trying to get into the sport. But um, if you definitely know water polo, like I, the way that you've seen water polo versus, you know, someone else, yeah. you're able to be like, oh, that was a really cool play. Right. You're able to appreciate it more. So, I know. It is it is one of those, if, you know, if, if you don't know the game, it can be extremely boring because mm -hmm. you don't know why something's happening. Right. And if you know, when you know why it's happening, it just makes it it makes it so much more fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know why he did that. Or I know why he couldn't do that. You know, because like you say, it, you know, especially when you're in the water, different people hear different things when they're playing. You know, like I, would, I was the type that sometimes I heard the crowd and sometimes I didn't, but they're always telling you to shoot. Yeah. Shoot! <laughs> and, you know, and then you don't. Uh, and they're like, why didn't he shoot? And Yeah. Like, yeah, like you say, well, he's getting clobbered, you know? Mm -hmm. Or you don't even see the person holding the guy's arm. But yeah, he's got his arm on lockdown you know you can't wind up but mm. yeah it's so when so you are going to uh, the navy academy when when do you head out i head out late june is induction day yeah. um i haven't gotten an exact date mm -hmm. but i know it's late june and um that's when you they, they, they shave your head they get you in a clothes it's on, it's on. yeah um and yeah, so I'll probably have family that flies out with me that day because it's they get to see you with your shaved head and right. your uniform and you, know, you get to say goodbye. But um, yeah, and then it's seven weeks of fun from there until yeah. you start because that's basic training. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Where do you do that? Where is basic training? It's at it's the academy. At the academy, yeah. okay. Um, so I've been trying to run. I joined the track team, uh, right. but I got some major shin splints. And so I have not been running since then. Uh -huh. And uh, I've been icing my shins. I've been trying to stretch out my calves a lot more, but running has been a huge obstacle because I've only been a water person. Yeah. You know, I'll do fine when we swim in the Chesapeake Bay, you know, <laughs> but when we get back on land, <laughs> I'm going to be the last one that comes in because I, I just can't run. So that's something that I'm working on. That's probably my biggest obstacle right, right now. But what? The running. Obviously, you're going to run a lot. I'm assuming. Right. But what's a lot? What you gonna, they're going to make you do 10 mile days or what, what kind of running? Yeah. Involved? Everybody who I've talked to so far has said that, um, literally every single person that's at the Academy right now that I've talked to has said that be like, watch out for the running because you do a lot more running in the summer than you think you are. Okay. So I think it's like probably five to eight. That's okay. what I've been kind of told. Right. It's five to eight miles a day. And they're combination of running, marching, hiking, or is it five um, to eight of running? I don't know exactly, but I know that 
and you're not running like every single day. Like right. you'll probably do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're probably running a lot. And then Tuesday, Thursday, maybe like you're swimming or calisthenics or something. But um, I just know that everybody's told me that there's a lot more running than you would expect from the Naval Academy, especially. So, so you'll, you'll go through your seven weeks then school starts essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you, what's the, I mean, cause I know nothing about the academies. Do you continue to train during school? So you'll, you'll have school, you have water polo. And then on top of that, do you still have military training? Yeah. So if everybody has, everybody plays a sport at, an, at the academy, if you don't play a varsity sport, you go on like an intramural team. Okay. So um, everybody has to be active. That's like okay. how they make everyone active. Yeah. So it's good to be on a varsity team though, because you also get out of little, uh, there's like some random physical fitness tests and like training like every month that you might have to do to like keep up on things. But if you're- on so a, All students have to do that. Yeah. Okay. But if you're on a varsity team, you can sometimes get out of those because right. you're already, you know, doing a lot. Yeah. And so that's what I've heard from, I have a friend, uh, Nathan, who swims at the academy and then obviously all the water polo people. And they just say that if you're on a varsity team, you have a lot of benefits because you don't have to do the regular PT during like the month or uh, you get to get out of a lot of things okay. that could be. Yeah. It's common sense. At yeah. Least. yeah. But at the academy, especially because if you're not on a team, you're probably doing a lot um, of like the little physical yeah, PT things that they have to do. So, um, yeah, okay. my, my goal this year for water polo is to try to make the, um, the travel team. Yeah. So I've been talking to the coach about that and, uh, that's my main goal. I mean, I know I'm probably not going to start, but I just want to be able to travel. Yeah. So, um, if I can do that, plus I think it'll get me out of a lot of more PT. <laughs> <laughs> as long as yeah. I'm just like on the bus, I could do homework on the bus and not play. Yeah. That'll be fine for me. Speaking of homework, what's your major going to be? I'm thinking finance and economics. Uh -huh. uh, I want to do defense contracting like my grandfather. Right. But not on the engineering side like he did, more on like the business side. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I want to minor in Russian. So okay. um, I feel like that'd be a good business opportunity. It definitely would be. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't major in Russian. You can major in Arabic and Chinese, but I'm not going to major. I don't want to major in a language. I just yeah. want to probably minor in it. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. The um, So then yeah, you go through school and then you have to serve five years after, mm -hmm. correct? Right. So but, you don't have to sign your five-year agreement until you're, you're the end of your sophomore year. So you have about two years to figure out if the academy is what you want to do. Okay. And serving, yeah, which is really nice. And I didn't know this until I went to the academy and talked to everybody. Um, a lot of people just think like, oh, I'm going to be in the Navy now, which I am, but I don't have to go for, it's not a nine-year commitment until I sign the end of my sophomore year. And nine years, I mean, in like the four- Four school, school and five. And five. Yeah. Okay. So after two years, you say you don't, what happens if you don't sign? Then you can, uh, it's yeah. actually kind of a big- process because they really want you because they've invested yeah the government's totally. invested money into you right and uh because you the academy's free and so you have to go to like the board and explain why you don't want to be there and then they'll probably tell you maybe they'll try to have you stay they'll i don't know what kind of things they can do to like mediate you know right. whatever but so, so some kind of process happens right and you have to talk to the board and administration and tell them that you don't want to be there anymore and then uh you can transfer out any place you want. But I know if you quit like your fourth year, um, then you have to pay like 300 grand. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Yeah. You it's just like paying for college. Yeah. Since you didn't do your service. Right. Pay us back. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Fair. But I think there's also, I mean, that's, that's just not a good thing to do. No, no. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. But I can, you know, it's understandable that somebody going into, you know, as an 18 year old, Mm -hmm. it's totally understandable to not know for sure. Right. Like even, even though it might be a lifelong dream, you actually get there and this is, whoa, this is way different than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. This isn't what I want to do. So 
I get it. But at the same right. time, it is totally fair. All right. It's not going to be a free ride then. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally understand. But that's yeah. what the, the two years gives you that time. It to, gives you that time to figure out, you know, if you want to do it or not. Um, yeah. And, but I know everybody, their plebe year, plebe year is like the worst year. That's your first year as a freshman. And uh, that's like everybody dreads plebe year because you're just getting, you know, totally hit on by all the people. It's just and, getting worked uh, over. Yeah. Yeah. But after that, it's smooth sailing. That's what the, everybody's been saying. Right. So you're yeah. not going to want to go there your first year. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to ask you yeah. after that. But by your sophomore year, maybe you'll have a better peace of mind of what the academy is about and if you want to stay or not. Right. So. Now, do you live on campus all four years at the academy? Yeah. Or is it choices like other schools? No, you live on campus all four years. Um, as you, you know, your third year, you might be able to wear like civilian clothes to, because uh, it's in Annapolis, which is the capital of maryland and it's right it like it's basically right next to the city right yeah it, right on the uh the harbor it's not isolated at all like any of the other academies which is something that really drew me to it okay um it's really within the city and you can like wear civilian clothes and you can get off campus like on the weekends and stuff mm -hmm. but i know your plebe year you, you have to stay on campus and then sophomore year you have a little more freedom junior year more freedom i got gotcha. you senior year you're basically like going to the academy and then you can kind of do whatever you want like on the weekends yeah yeah so so they've, they've got you locked down for a couple of years pretty yeah. good and yeah. if they find you at like a bar or something and because a lot of the teachers go there and if a teacher sees you at a bar like you're you're getting kicked out no kidding yeah because that's a lot of people that i know who said that they've have friends that They'll try to sneak out and get, I mean, you're in college, you know, you try to, it's totally. a Saturday night, you're yeah. trying to get out and, you know, the capital of Maryland's about a few blocks away. Right. You want to go to like a bar and you'll just see like, you know, your admin there and you're like, oh, uh -oh. that's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're supposed to be in bed. So. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's in. It's not good. There's a lot of punishments for that. So, you know, all these things just add up. It's a big decision to, to go to an academy. It's for real, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, but out of the uh, the other schools that I was looking at that I went, uh, the Naval Academy just seemed like the best option for me. I just loved um, everybody was just so, you know, walking through campus, there was a sense of, you know, that everyone was just like a unit. Everyone was together. They had a common goal. They all wanted to serve. You know, I another school that I went to was Brown. Mm-hmm and harvard and <clears throat> they just everybody was kind of uptight on their own figuring out that you know um figuring out their life their life and <laughs> yeah. uh which is fine but at the academy everybody was on one mission everybody mm -hmm. was here to help each other out no one was trying to be like yeah you're trying to be the top of your class but you're not trying to do anything you know if that makes right. sense yeah totally it does yeah, yeah totally so, does. uh that's yeah. what I loved about the academy is everybody was just, and everybody's physically fit too, which you don't think is a big deal, but you're just around really awesome people who are all athletic, all yeah. super, you know, super great. And it's uh, like you're on one big team. It is. Yeah. You know, versus being on a team at a big school where, mm. you know, I mean, both ways is good. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I can see where that's incredibly motivating every day. Like you're just walking around amongst people like you right you know which is yeah. super cool will you also swim there I or is not. it just water yeah. polo just water polo time. yeah i'm not good enough to swim to if i focus just swimming i probably could but i, I wouldn't be able to master both at the right. same time right um yeah they had a lot of guys go to the olympic trials a couple of years ago two years ago i think nice so they're like legit swimmers there. yeah um, that's uh honest answer here with this question do you mm. swim just to stay in shape for water polo or do you actually enjoy swimming i just swim to stay in shape <laughs> i i yeah i just like swimming i hate it um but it is a common good, answer that's common yeah yeah <laughs> it is a nice way to like you know saturday morning you'll go on a swim and i always feel better after i swim yeah whether totally. i like it or not right before or during the workout but I can't complain about the feeling that I have after, which yeah. is always a positive feeling. Always is. Yeah. So, um, 
So no, no I don't like it. But after I, I don't regret swimming after my, my workouts. Yeah. I'm like that with pretty much any workouts. And I always tell people, if I don't feel better after a workout, something else is wrong. Chances are, usually it means I'm getting sick. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I, you know, something external is coming on right. versus it just didn't work. Like I always feel good after workout, mm -hmm. no matter what weights, yeah. running, swimming, always feel really good after running because it's over. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a nice <laughs> Thank thing. Thank God. <laughs> I always trip. I do trip out on people that swim just to swim. Like right. that's their sport. Like my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. How he, he loves to swim. He swims every day. He wakes up at like 5 a.m., goes to McMurtry and swims for like an hour and a half before work every day. And he right. just loves it. He says that he has to do it for to stay in shape. But I don't believe him because he <laughs> he loves to swim, uh, and yeah, he swam in college. So that guy can swim anywhere. He's a swimmer. Yeah, he is very fast. He is a good swimmer. You know, before we came on, you were talking about you mentioned uh, how college athletes can be sponsored now, mm. and we got into it a little bit. But how does that silly question? But is it just like a pro, you just go find us, you know, hey, um, Lululemon wants to see you wear their clothes and you get paid for wearing their clothes? Or is that right. how it works? Or uh, I mean, I don't know exactly what happens, but I know I was talking to a friend who goes to Boulder and she mm -hmm. runs track and she was sponsored by a, like an energy drink. And I asked yeah. her about it and she said that she did a little on her part to email them and reach out, you know, give her her story, what she's doing. And then they reached back to her and talked about um, you know, something that they could do. But yeah, I think you just, uh, some people will give you like, Hey, we'll pay you, you know, a hundred bucks to post this every week. Yeah. And then others, it's like, you know, you have like a year plan and they'll send mm -hmm. you stuff as long as you post like multiple times. But, um, I don't think the Academy is going to let me do something like that. Pursue any of that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But, um, I'd definitely be interested I mean, that's something that I'd want to do. I mean, because why not? You know, right? So many people are doing it now. I'd take advantage. How long ago did they start that? I mean, it's I recent, it was, right? I think it was last year. Is it last year? Yeah, was the first last year. year it was the first year. Yeah. It's weird because when it, I didn't like the idea when I first started. I'm like, oh no, I don't want college athletes to be sponsored. I just mm -hmm. want it to be pure, like just. But like everything, as time goes on, I'm warming up to it and all that. I'm like, oh, you know, I could see this working out. Right. But I have to doesn't seem like it's blown up yet. Maybe it has, but it's not like I see, or if it is, I don't, don't even notice it. Yeah, I was worried about it more on the, you know, like you, before we came on, you kind of explained it a little bit. Like, yeah, during school time, like when you're actually playing, well, in water polo, there's not really any way for you to display something. But say you're a football player, it's right. not like they're going to be out there wearing their Lululemon are going to have, yeah, Lululemon yeah. across their back or <laughs> Under Armour or whatever. Right. It'll just be on their off time, on their personal time. That's mm -hmm. what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why they have more sponsorships that are like uh, energy drinks instead of like clothing apparel because they're already sponsored by, you know, Alabama, I think is Nike or I don't know what they are yeah, for right. football. But, you know, uh, that's why it's yeah. probably more of like energy drinks or cleats or something because you can wear whatever cleats you want. But um, right, yeah, a lot of people have been taking advantage that mainly for football because that's bigger. But I think it's just because uh, I know the uh, the QB for mm -hmm. Alabama, he has a sponsorship with I don't know who, but I know that he gave. I think he gave like half his team. He gave his team like half of the uh, like the money that he gets oh, from cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. So um to support his team, which I think is really cool. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah. So maybe you'll be out there with a Red Bull water polo cap on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean maybe <laughs> to keep me up. Or I could, you know, use it and say that this is for my long nights of studying at <laughs> right. the academy. I don't get much sleep, but <laughs> yeah, you know, the Red Bull does the trick. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, so where do where do people find you on social media? On Instagram. Uh Instagram. Oh, sure. Uh, Rory Began, uh, uh, yeah, just Rory Began, R O R Y B E G I N, plain and simple. Yeah, so yeah, they'll have to follow you so they can uh, follow your career. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Be some good post. 
But thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem. And it was nice, nice yeah. chatting with you. This is awesome. I thank yeah. you for having me. And uh, let's go Rams. And I this forgot to ask you though, what's your workout tomorrow? Tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably stretch out because it's a it's a Monday tomorrow, right? So yeah. I'll stretch out. I think I'm gonna hit some legs, and uh, then stretch after legs, and then go for a swim. That's probably. I dread legs. Legs is my worst. Yeah, I understand. I just hate legs, but it yep. makes me feel good because after it makes your legs all beefy. Yep. And then you're nice and big, and you're like, okay, I can do this. There you go. You know what? Before we, how much? Um, you were talking about you wanted to put on weight. Yeah. How much are you looking to put on? So I'm 175 right now, uh -huh. and uh, I'm trying to be like 185 because you need mm -hmm. like 10 pounds to uh, at the academy uh, for after basic training because you're bound to lose 10 pounds. Right. So I kind of preferably I'd be 195 so I can lose 10 pounds and then be 185 for my wake up weight, but. Um, that's Makes kind sense. Of what I'm I didn't think on. about that. Yeah, yeah. You gotta put on a little padding before. Yeah, it would be a, before a going bit in. Fatter when you. <laughs> but that's probably another reason why my shin splints get bad because I'm trying to put on weight. Yeah, you know, I'm lifting heavy. I'm eating a lot, and then I'm working out and running on my legs that aren't used to the weight that I'm trying to put on on my upper body and lower body. So it's all those factors are coming in, and I'm getting shin splints. So. Yeah. Um, Pretty painful. Do you ever get? Are you a big shin splint? I am not. Really? No, I've yeah, lucky. Don't never huh. had them. I Interesting. Know. Like never in your life. Never in my life. What? <laughs> I, yeah, I yeah, I'm relatively injury free for the most part. Okay. But one I do have, which is pretty significant when it does pop up, is sciatic. But that does not happen. Doesn't pop up during regular training. Okay. It only pops up when I get crazy, crazy long, long hours during the week. Mm -hmm. You know, but I have I haven't done that in a lot of years. So, do you ever get like in injury uh, free at the moment? Elbow pains when you're swimming, like elbow tweaks. No or? elbow pains, but I had shoulder pain years okay. ago, but that went away too. Interesting. So I'm lucky, lucky there. I've been getting yeah. a lot of like elbow pains. Um, because as you know, you know, with swimming, with any stroke, yeah. you're making this motion. Yeah. And this isn't the best. It's kind of like throwing a curveball. Yeah. I mean, not as bad, but yeah, yeah. you're putting a lot of torque on it. And um, so I've been doing, I'm trying to do like a lot more. Also, my back shoulder starts to hurt mm -hmm. because as swimmers, you know, we have, we have a really big, I don't know what uh, muscle this is behind the deltoid, but a big kind of back shoulder muscle because you're pulling all the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get a bigger <clears throat> front muscle on my shoulder so I can kind of balance out. Get it balanced. The, yeah. yeah. Because I'm using my back too much. But Well, and that is a problem with any sport where you're only moving in one direction. You know, mm -hmm. you know your arms going forward to back a thousand times a day or, you know, right. with all the yards you're putting on. And yep, a lot of injuries or a lot of, not even injuries, but just uh, issues can pop up just because of, things get out of balance like you mm -hmm. say one muscle is just so much more developed than the other side yeah and then and that's probably too i i turn to my right to breathe every mm -hmm. stroke so i go you know one two one two yeah and my right arm's a lot more like not a lot more defined than my left arm but it's also my dominant hand so i throw the ball and stuff but you know i get like kinks in my neck from looking to the right all the time mm -hmm. um but then when I go to my left, I don't swim as fast. So it's like, you know, do I not swim as fast and go to my left or do I? It's a pretty awkward feeling, huh? Yeah. Breathing off the other side. Yeah, it's weird. And uh, I never developed it. I mean, yeah. I'll do it, but uh. <laughs> I suck at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, there, there's a balance that I need to find. Everybody needs to find it, but, you know, uh, I'll figure it out someday. But Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you're there, they're going to have the best trainers. Yeah. I hope so. I mean, I've I've heard differently. I have a chiropractor right now that I go to once a week to kind of, you know, make mm -hmm. me stable. And he said that he has a guy that plays water polo at Stanford. And you'd think that you have like the best, you yeah. know, uh, athletic trainers there. But he said that they they don't. Really? They just, that's what he said. He said that they don't have any huh. trainers that, you know, are either good chiropractors or 
they're just lazy. They don't want to. And it's probably school by school or situation by situation. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing. I, know, I guess I'll, I'll find out, but, um, I thought it was really interesting for him to say that, especially that at Stanford for water polo. And maybe it's just a water polo thing. Um, but this is what he said. So I'll keep you updated on that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That'll be interesting to know. Cause you're definitely going to be using them. Yeah. You know, and you would think that, you know, especially at an academy where you have to be, you can't get hurt or else you're a liability. Right. And so they'd have to keep you up to date on. I'm just going to hope health. that person had a one-off experience and that yeah. you're going to probably come into some pretty, pretty incredible trainers. Mm. That's where I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that train of thought <laughs> yeah, until you, until you post me I'm different. Gonna, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with. They'll hook you attitude. up. Yeah, but yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on, yeah, and no uh, wish you the best of luck while you're out there. Thank you. Follow follow him at Rory Vegan yes, on sir. Instagram. Thank you. All right, thanks, man. Yeah. No